Okay, you're probably wondering, um, this room I'm in, it's a one bedroom in a modular home. Modular homes, what they'll do is build half the house in a factory on an assembly line and then then they then when they bring the they truck the halves of these of these pre-built homes onto a building site and then they set one half up and then they set the other half up and they mate the two together and join them along the roof line and connect the, um, the electrical together because look on these houses all of the plumbing and the 220 is on the on the on the um, on my right side here, and this side of the house just has some electrical connections in it, and then the wiring for the cable TV. So my utilities: the washer and the dryer, and the water heater, and the oven, and the refrigerator, um, and the dishwasher are on that side of the house. With all of the plumbing, there's no plumbing on this side. So what they do is they'll they'll have the half of that house which is this house is 28 feet wide by 48 feet long um, rectangular shape and there's there's no um, there's no extensions of the eaves on these houses so the eaves are very close to the to the to the wall of the outside edge of the house there's no real overhang it doesn't they're, they're not built like that they're built more shorter like that so they look more and the, the, the house I'm in was built in 1987 and it was it was moved to a trailer to a to a housing park where they just have these communities with a road and then they'll have nothing but modular homes or or double wide or single sometimes I'll have single wides too but most of the time double wide and the houses are really super close together and people who live in these places are usually over 55 and that's where you typically see the kind, kind of house that I live in. But this house that I live in is, is on, um, the land is on, the land that it's on is owned by the, is part of the house. So the two are connected together. Whereas at a, in an over 55 park that you'd see, those places you usually rent the space when you're living in it. So I'm telling you some about, this is the United States of America. And these kinds of housing areas are more common and are a lot more common in the Pacific Northwest than let's say the, the, the South or the or um, or the East Coast where homes are most of the houses were built are older homes. So this house is pretty well centered on the lot. The lot that I live on is is a very rectangular shape. It's a hundred it's a hundred and fifty feet by a hundred feet. Um, the house is situated in the center, so I have some front yard and I have some backyard. After the house was put in, they built porches on the front and in the back, so it's covered. So it rains a lot here, so we, it's common for these houses to have porches on them, or covered areas. One, one side of the house is covered with a corrugated plastic roofing, and the other side is, has, a, has a wooden porch built off of it with a composition roof on it which is a really low which is a really um, the the pitch is is very flat so it's not really a good well well built and then they they attach the edge of the um, of the porch actually to the to the side of the house they nailed it on with a with a um, with a two by eight which is done improperly you're supposed to have separate columns and then have it just not touching the house. Just have the house roof overhang on top of it. But they didn't do it that way. The house also has a custom built fireplace in it. It's a, it's a, a, a steel fabricated from steel plate, um, quarter inch steel plate that's fabric that's welded together in the shape of a, um, of a tr truncated, uh, like at, uh, I think it's a Dymaxion shape. It's more of a Dymaxion shape on both edges, and then it's rectangular in the center. And the door is, there's two doors, metal doors, that are on this side that open up like this. Um, and then it's a very big wood stove, so you can fit logs in there that are over 18 inches long. <coughs> or, yeah, it's pretty long. So 
and the, because of the density of the steel that the that the wood stove is constructed of, the and also I'm using um, stones inside of the fireplace. I know it sounds weird, but on the lot I live on, it's glacial moraine, so there's a lot of boulders, and then there's cobbles. And so what I'll do is I'll find a boulder which is so big and then I put it, once I get the fire going in that stove, the, the inside of the stove is big enough to where I can fit a lot of wood in there or, or what I do is I build a wood pile. It gets going and then I get coals and then I'll, then I'll take these big stones and I'll put them inside of the, of the wood stove. So inside of my wood stove I have stones and the stones they'll heat up. So I'll have one or two logs in there. I'll put in at maybe 9, 30, 10 at night, p.m. And then um, those three or four, those three logs, sometimes four, but most of the time up to three logs, I'll put in there, you know, so big a diameter logs that are 16, 12 to 6, 18, 20 inches long. The, the firewood I cut up from... Um, wood that I bought, I traded somebody, actually some work they did for me. I traded them their work in my truck for a, uh, for a, a half, for about a half a cord of wood and then some other work. It was carpentry work, fixing a door, fixing my gate, f fixing the, um, the panels on my, on my, on my, on my porch because they were leaking. There was a windstorm and some branches broke off the tree and fell onto my porch. So I hired this guy to work for me and that was one of the things that I traded him. Um, some of the other things were, as, um, it was an old 1986 pickup and the, the head gasket had been blown and there was a, a rusty um, manifold on the engine block. And it was pretty beat up. It was a lot of dents and a lot of things were broken on the interior because the car got stolen once and then I got it back at the police yard and getting it back there it was kind of torn up and there was a lot of things missing out of it I had to pay to have replaced after it got stolen then I got it back which it kind of it was right after I got it laid off and and I was no longer paying comprehensive or collision insurance on the vehicle so that after after I got laid off and I stopped paying my insurance then the my truck got stolen. Um, I made payments on it. It was $170 a month and I made a five year, I was on a four, a four year payment plan. So it was, it was pretty high interest too. It was like 11 and a half percent. My dad co-signed on the loan. So it was like my, I was establishing credit for myself too. So, and I paid about $7,500 for, for, it was a standard Toyota four speed pickup with the short bed with the uh, jap handles on that come out like that so it had a lot of other I was in another accident where I was backing out of a, of a parking stall and I, I I I crunched in the left left panel front panel I crunched in on the post for the um, for the parking structure when I was, when I was backing out and another time somebody rear-ended me and they didn't have any insurance and uh, another time the car got like people vandalized it you know they just saw it there or they were mad at me or someone and they went and they vandalized my car and tore up the bumper and tore, tore up some other things off of it so in a way it was it seemed like the car it seemed like people out in the world didn't like that car for some reason people made people angry or upset or something about that car was so it was maybe I just had a lot of bad experiences with it actually it was a pickup truck so so anyhow I just thought I'd let you know what was going on with me some of the things that have happened to me and some of my own um, thoughts about different subject matters